Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, this is this problem that says a linear torsional spring deforms such that an applied couple moment m is related to the spring rotation degrees in radians by the equation m 20 times uh, theta newton meters. If such a spring is attached to the end of a pin connected uniform 10 kilogram rod, determine the angle uh, theta for equilibrium. The spring is undeformed when uh, theta equals to zero degrees. Okay guys, so this problem is kind of easy. It just uses a formula that is not commonly in the book. So that's why it might throw you off, but let's get to it. So we could draw the free body diagram like this. We know that the weight acts right at half of the rod. And then we have a moment created by the spring. M is equal to 20 times theta. Important thing to note is that theta is in radians. That being said, let's get to it. So this is a free body diagram. And basically what we need to find is we need to find the angle of theta. Now, if we look at the problem, we know that the initial state is at zero degrees, which is, this is the initial. And you know that the maximum is going to be going straight down. So you know that theta is somewhere between zero degrees and 90 degrees. It's important for you to make this observation so you know that your answer more or less makes sense. But remember that theta is in radians, so that will be pi over 2, 0. So let's do some of the moments at A, assuming counterclockwise. is equal to, as assuming cut clockwise is positive. So sum of the moments at A is equal to zero. And at A we have the moment created by the spring, I'm gonna call it MS, let's call it MS. And that is pushing it counterclockwise. So it's positive, minus the weight. And this is important because you know that the weight has two components, this component parallel to the rod and a component going perpendicular to the rod. And the only one creating a moment, creating a moment is this part of the, of the force. So you need to find the projection of the weight that is perpendicular to the rod. Now you know that the weight is equal to 10 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81. That will make it 98.1 Newtons. But what is this angle? This angle is the same as theta. So you know that the projection generating, the projection of the weight that is generating the moment is equal to W cosine of theta times the distance from A to the point where the force is acting, which is half the rod, which is 0.25, because the rod has a length of 0.5, given in the problem. Now you know that ms is given by 20 times theta minus w cosine of theta times 0.25. And this can be further written as 20 theta minus 24.52 cosine of theta. And this is zero. Oops, that's not theta, that's zero. Now with this formula, all we have to do, we have one variable, and what we have to do is solve for theta. But it's not that simple because we have a trigonometric function, cosine of theta, and theta by itself. So for this, we're gonna use what I believe is called as Newton methods of approximation. And I know it sounds a little, you know, 
intimidating, don't let intimidate you, it's super easy to use. So what we do here is we have two functions, right? So we have 20 theta and we have 24.52 cosine of theta. It's actually, let me actually write it down in a way that I feel that it's gonna be easier for you guys to understand. I can rewrite this function as 20 theta is equal to 24.52 cosine of theta. And basically what we need what we need to do is find out what does theta need to be for these functions to be equal to each other, right? So if we were to graph these functions, we would have The function 20 theta, let me put a one over here. And remember this is in radians, so this is 0.5, right? And this is 1.5, okay. So this is 20. So you know that in this function right here, when theta equals one, then the function equals 20 theta is equal to 20. So the graph of this function is a simple line going this way. This is 20 theta. The second function, cosine of theta, if you remember the graph of the function for cosine, it looks something like this. Hopefully my memory is not failing me. But this is pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two, and this is two pi. So this is the amplitude, which is one negative one. So the, the function of cosine looks something like this, correct? But if we were, we have an amplitude right here of 24.52, so this could be 24.52, and this could be negative 24.52. So let's say if this is 10 and this is 15 and this is five, then this will be 25, so let's say it looks something like this. And pi over two, pi over two is equal to 1.57. So it's somewhere over here. So that's where we're going. So this is how these two functions look. So they intersect somewhere around here. And it's pretty close to one, if you see it, right? This is the approximation. And remember, we're using Newton's law of approximation. So we're gonna say that more or less, I think that the answer is one, but we know it's not, but we're gonna get to the right answer in a second. Now, why is this important? Is for this beautiful function to make sense. We're gonna say, I think, the approximate solution is one. Now, Newton's law of approximation says this. A n is equal to A n minus one minus f of x over f the derivative of f of x. Now, how are we gonna use this function? Well, we know that the function is, let's not forget the function, f of x is equal to, the function that we're trying to solve is f of x is equal to 20 theta minus 24.52 cosine of theta, okay? And theta in this case is x, but I'm just gonna treat it as x just for. So we know that the derivative of this function is equal to 20 plus 24.52 sine of x. Now look at the formula. We're gonna say that a zero, which is our initial approximation is one. Okay, but we know that this can be the right answer because we graphed it and we know it's a little bit to the left, but let's keep going. So A1, which is An in this case, is equal to A0 minus F of X over the derivative of F of X. So that will mean that A1 is equal to one minus F of X, which is 20 times one. One is A0, of course minus 24.52 cosine of one. Remember, 
one is in radians. Okay, so hold on. let me finish the function before I give you the warning. 20 plus 24.52, this is the derivative, sine of one. When you plug this into your calculator, make sure that you put your calculator on radians. Don't make the mistake of leaving it on degrees, okay? So if you solve, you're gonna get that A1 is equal to 0.8338, okay? Now we're gonna do this again. A2 is equal to A1, because remember now A2 is An, uh, A1 minus the same thing, 20 times 0.8338 minus 24.52, 0 0.8338. I'm basically plugging in A1 over here directly. Yeah, you know what, let me write it down. I don't want you guys to get confused, so. trying to be clear here so a1 a1 over 20 plus 24.52 sine of a1 if you plug in a1 into this function you're gonna get that a2 is equal to 0.8286 now you're getting the gist of it I'm gonna keep going a3 is equal to a2 minus 20, A2 minus 24.52, A2 all over the derivative, which is 20 plus 24.52 sine of A2. If you plug A2, which is right here, if you plug it into this equation and here and here and here, and you plug all this into your calculator, you're gonna get that A3 is equal to 0.8286, but what happened now? A3 and A2 are the same now. So as you can see, we approximated this answer, and then this answer got a little closer to the right answer, and this answer got a little closer to the right answer, which is starting to be the right answer, and this answer is the same as A2, which means we found our answer. Now, if you keep going with A4, A5, A6, you're always gonna get the same answer, 0.8286. So if you wanna keep going, but you're, you're still gonna keep getting the same number. Once you get the same number twice, then that means that that is the right answer. So the number that we were trying to find, theta, is equal to 0.8286, and this is in radians. If we wanna convert this to degrees, we just have to multiply it. Theta in degrees is equal to, uh, 0.8286 times times 180 over pi. And if you multiply it times 180 and divide it by pi, you're gonna get that theta is equal to 47.5 degrees. And this is the final answer. And that is how we find this annoying function that has the variable, and in another term, it has a trigonometric function with the variable.